Okay, hello and welcome to part two of this series. Um, in this part, what we're doing is dealing with the database export sort of feature um, or you know, method of using CSV files. Um, and this is probably the most useful thing that you can do because it's um, a very easy way to like offer a download. Like, um, for example, if you use like Facebook or YouTube or Google, if you have a Google account, there's a serp the part on their like settings page somewhere. They've got like a, a button you can click to download all of your data, which is apparently some sort of law. Um, I don't know, but um, what it does is let you well download everything that they've got sort of on you um, as a user or an account. Um, and that's quite often done in a CSV file because it's like I said at the start, it's a very standard format and you can import it easily and make spreadsheets and graphs and all sorts of cool things, well cool things, um, useful things. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in this part. And like I said previously, there is a slight little bit of extra sort of awkwardness to deal with. Anyway, let's get on with what we were meant to be doing, which is the user stuff. So, what we'll do first is open a connection to our database. Actually, I should probably explain the database first, so let's just go to our browser and the PHP MyAdmin tab. Um, this is the database we're going to be working with. It's just an example user's database, so it's got three columns or four columns, if you can count the ID, which you don't, but um, there's the username, the user email, and user password, um, and this is just some sort of generated example data um, that we're going to be using. So there's a hundred rows, um, and it's just to demonstrate that you know you can back up large data sets. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So the first thing we want to do is create a method to read this data and you know get it into our script. And that's what our user's backend file is going to be for. But before we do that, we need to make sure we're connect connected to the database. I'll just close these two CSV files, we don't need those anymore. Um, so let's go to our init page, or init script file, whatever. And just after we've defined the core path, we're going to open a connection to the database. So we'll just do MySQL connect. And the server name is my local server. And the username is... Um, example user and the password is example pass then we need to tell the server which database we're working with so mysql select db oops and the database was called csv example so I'll just go to our page and actually I'll just go to our page our code I'll be on our test page and delete that because it'll give an error and we'll just hit refresh and you can see the no errors so that means we have connected successfully so now we're going to create the function to read all of the users so we're going to go to our users backend file here and we're going to create a function called fetch all users and this will just return an array of you know user data so let's have it as a comment um, returns information on all of the users in the table. Good enough. Okay, so the first thing we want to do inside of here is define an array which is going to be called users and that's what we're going to be returning at the very end. So let's just come down and add that return. Like so. Or if it will work. Okay, there we go. So inside of here um, here, if you can see that, that's where we want to query the database and process the rows. So we'll define the query first as a variable called result. And that's going to be the result of the MySQL query function. And we're just going to do a very simple select query. So we'll select the user name, the user email, and the user password, which is probably not the best idea. You don't want to go exporting your passwords all over the place but um, for the sake of this example let's just carry on and we'll be selecting these columns from the users table. I'm going to go over this, the query part quite quickly just because it's something we've done quite a few times before. So then we need to loop over all of the rows from this result so we'll just do while um, while row equals mysql fetch a sock of result is not equal to false. Oops. We'll do something. So inside of this loop, sort of here, um, 
we have each row inside of the row variable. So for example, we could use row user email as their email address. Oops. Okay, so that's that done. And what we want to do is add something to the users array. Oops. So add ah, add to the users array, and then we're just going to be adding each row in turn, which is fine because that's all we need. So if we go back to our test page now and just do print underscore r of fetch all users. Oh dear. Terrible, terrible typing. We can do that as a simple test, and that should list all of the users. Let's go to our browser, hit refresh, and as you can see, that has worked. So we have something that looked a little bit like the previous array that I printed out, um, which is <coughs> which just had like 0, 1, and 2 here. But that doesn't matter, because the write CSV function ignores these. So what we can do is pass this straight into the write CSV function to create the CSV file. So we could just do, for example, um, write CSV. Let's call it users.csv, like so. We could just do that. And if I go to our browser and hit reload, we should get a blank page, if it ever loads. OK, that took a long time, but never mind. Um, so if we look at the file that this created, just hit refresh on this folder and you should see we have this file called users.csv if I open this up with my text editor you can see that we have the name their email address and their password separated by a comma however if we open this with my um, office program I'll just use the default settings uh, make text a little bigger uh, let's just say 14 you can see that this isn't actually particularly useful because we don't know what each of these are because there's no column heading. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but say you had some other information that looked a bit like a name. I don't know. First name, first name, last name. That might be quite ambiguous. So what we need to do is add a first column to the array before we put it, send it to the write CSV function to add the column headings. So the way we can do that is by, well, getting rid of this window first because we don't need it anymore. And then we can, well, we'll deal with it in our page, test.php file. So instead of just passing this straight in, what we're going to do is cut that. And we're going to create a variable up here called users. Oh, actually, let's call it rows, because it's not going to be users. And we'll put that, set that equal to that. And then what we need to do now is work out the column headings and then add them on as the first element of this rows array before we pass it in like so to here. So what we'll do to accomplish that is, if you remember the output that I printed out a moment ago, had the column names as the um, array keys for each row, if that makes sense. Let's just do print underscore our rows again, just to demonstrate. Here we have the column names. So what we can do is take the first element, i.e. the first row, and then take its array keys. So let's just go through this step by step. What we'll do is take the first row. Um, oh dear, insert key. Okay, there. So if we print that out now, we have just one, the first row, and then we can take the array keys of this. So if I just do array keys, we should now see that we just have each column in an array. So first, second, third. If I highlight first, second third. Um, so yeah, now we can add that to the start of the array. So this is the thing we want to add, and the way we can add it is using the array unshift function, which has a ridiculous name. I don't know why it's called unshift. That just seems silly to me, but whatever. Okay, so this takes two parameters. First one being the array you want to add something to, and the second one being the thing you want to add, which is just the array keys, like so. So after we've done that, we can print, the out, print it out again. And we should see that we have, in the first element, we have the column headings. And in the second element, we have what was previously in the first element. 
So that's worked. And if I just scroll all the way down, we should have 101 elements, which we do because it starts at zero. Okay, so that's that done. Um, and there is a problem here, actually, which I sh probably should point out, is that we're trying to access the first element, not necessarily knowing that it actually exists. Um, so what we should really do is have a check here to make sure that the um, rows array is not empty, like so. I mean, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to always have like at least one user, I guess. Um, so it's probably not too much of a problem once you've regis registered yourself. But um, for the sake of you know being correct about things, it's probably sensible to have that to avoid any errors appearing. I mean, it might happen that the database connection fails for some reason, and you don't want to create a broken CSV file if that happens. So yeah, that's just you know something you should probably add for correctness. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, in fact, yeah, that's it. So let's just refresh one more time. No output, which is good. And let's have a look at our folder. And just hit refresh. And let's open this up in my editor. And as you can see now, we have the first um, line containing the headings and the rest containing the data. I'll scroll down, 101 lines. So that's good. So let's just um, open this up with my office thingy. And as you can see, first line are the headings. Well, hopefully you can see that's a bit small. Ugh. To faff about like this, but um, yeah, there you go. So the first line cont contains the um, column names. So that's pretty much it. That's most likely the mo most useful use for the whole CSV file thing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and yep, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>